Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the always online multiplayer gaming podcast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things multiplayer related. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, as always, and this is episode 512. We're doing it live, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb, even though hitting stop recording last week on the show <laughs> totally killed the stream. Uh, even though Streamlabs said we were still connected. Sorry if you were joining us live, and if it happens again today, my apologies as well. Streamlabs might need a little bit of a, a little tweak, a little update. Uh, but we've got lots of MMO stuff to cover. If you're watching on YouTube or on MMOBomb.com, listening on Audible, Spotify, any of those platforms, thank you so much. While you're there, give it a like, a subscribe, turn on those notifications, and most importantly, get in your question of the answer, a question of the week, question of the answer. Question of the week answers and your weekly bombs. An important part of the show. Chat standing by with their weekly bombs. We'll throw them in when we get there. Joining me to talk about all kinds of fun MMO and multiplayer stuff, Mr. Troy Blackburn. What's up, Noob Fridge? Unfortunately, not feeling great today. I got a little got a little funk in the chest and in the throat. So if I sound Ooh. a little funny, I apologize. No, yeah, it should be a little bit of a shorter show today. So we'll get you we'll get you out and write your pieces and go to bed. Yeah, go to, bed. go to bed. I like the bed. Also on the line, although not on camera because he is moving. My man is moving. In the process of moving, Mr. Matthew D'Onofrio, the Dino Fries. What's up, boss? Hey, guys. Sorry you can't see my beautiful face today, but there's boxes everywhere. I don't know where my camera is. It's packed away. And yeah, that's what that's why you're looking at. Um my just as beautiful logo <laughs> he hit me like but five minutes here. before the show and he was like hey is it gonna be okay if i'm not on camera and i was like what if i say no like it's five minutes till the show no, time i would i would show you guys what's going on but you guys wouldn't like me anymore it's so messy <laughs> over here <laughs> i was like yeah we just i just need give me a big dino fries instead of the small one so we got it there we got the dino fries one let's go and uh talk about some fun mmo stuff here we go So we've got a bunch of game stuff to talk about, including some upcoming games and some, again, more interesting, eye-rolling, head-slapping multiplayer gaming news. But I wanted to start this week talking about just... Uh, we, we've spent a lot of time talking about kind of like general things, right? Like our favorite things to do in certain MMOs, or we've talked about classes and things that MMOs should do, what draws you to MMOs and stuff like that. We're seeing a lot of stuff in development right now. One of the things we're going to talk about when we get to the upcoming games is um, Ghost, right? Coming from Ghost Crawler and the team at Fantastic Pixel Castle because they've started dropping this week some really, really early stuff. <laughs> and like Greg Street, <laughs> <laughs> Greg Street tweeted, and he was like, hey, we're going to drop some stuff. Uh, and I just want to be in here before Looks Like Ass shows up in the comments <laughs> to say that this is like, we're used to like, oh, we're going to show you some early stuff. No, this was actual like early stuff, some placeholders and some textures that aren't there and, you know, a very skeleton UI and... I don't know about you guys like Troy and Matthew, but I love seeing behind the scenes development stuff because some of like some of Me it too. I can understand. Right. I'm a software engineer, but I am by no means a game designer. Right. I understand concepts, but could not execute them uh, in certain ways. I readily admit that I understand how a sprite works and a texture works and 3D modeling and putting things here. But if I tried to do it, it would like I'd have a cube with grass falling off of it. Like, you know, <laughs> I understand. it. So I always like seeing this type of stuff. Now, there's also, also the danger of seeing things too early, which can also have its downsides. So it's very interesting to see some of this stuff. But it made me start thinking like, okay, Ghost Crawler and team uh, at Fantastic Pixel Castle, they're going in a light, like a different way uh, in doing some development, right? And we've seen other MMOs, um, namely Pantheon, uh, Shroud of the Avatar, even Ashes of Creation to a certain extent. Try and Monsters open up and memories too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monsters and memories. Man, I'm I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, 
we've seen them try to do this like almost open source development, if that makes sense, right? Like developing side by side with the community certainly has pros and being very community oriented uh, and and front facing fans like that. But also, and it's already coming up in chat, it also comes with the downside of showing things way, way too early can lead to, is this game ever going to come out, Troy? Uh, and that's certainly a danger that I'm sure uh, Greg Street and team took into account here. Yeah, you would you would hope so because I fall into the camp. I, I mean, I like to see some of that early stuff because I think it's cool just to see how things begin their lives, uh, how games begin their lives. But at the same time, it's like it's so early on, and now it's going to be such a long slog between now and when the game actually comes out that uh, you know eventually. Are, are people that's going to be hyped for it going to lose that hype over time and just seeing all these super early assets and not being able to understand you know the process of what they're looking at yeah and we're gonna i'm gonna show some of those pictures in a minute gang but it also sparked in my mind like what uh what they're trying to do with ghost it's like sounds like a little little different you know they've got these two different kind of shard color things worlds zones that you go to to do things but I, I started thinking, like, is there an IP that I really, really would love to have an MMO in that just hasn't, that, that I just haven't yet? My, my, my phone is literally ringing. I, I have no idea who that is. So that's going to have to wait. Um, yeah, I just have a, an idea. What IPs do you think for you, Matthew, like you would absolutely love to see an MMO developed in, even if they were showing off some stuff early. Uh, or if there's an IP that maybe you're not personally interested, you kind of look at and go, how, how is that not an MMO yet? Dude, yeah. Uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. That would make a cool MMO. Really? In my opinion. What? Why not? Everyone, you, you get to choose like, oh, do you want to be an Earthbender, a Firebender, an Airbender, or a Waterbender? And then you start off in that tribe's location in the world. And then you kind of all meet in the middle at some point. Um, like, I think it's called Industry City in Legend of Korra. I don't know. That just right off the top of my head. I think that would be awesome. I would love to see the I mean, development of that, too. It would certainly have day one initial draw. I will absolutely give it that. <laughs> it would absolutely <laughs> have a, an audience on day one. Troy, is there one that just kind of in your head, you're like, I really want this or man, how is that not an MMO? Obviously, like MMOs cost a lot to make a lot of time and stuff like this. You can't make one about every IP, nor would you want to. But there's just some I feel like they just lend themselves to it. My answer to this has always been Stephen King's Dark Tower series. You've got you've oh, got come on, man. They can't even make a there. good movie. <laughs> Say. <laughs> Hey, it's a it's a hell of a book series though. But yeah, they they slaughtered that movie. They they completely mixed up stories, didn't make it clear if we were seeing the book or or like a sequel to the books or or what was going on with it. The movie was all over the place, but the but the IP itself, man, it's got everything you can want. It's got western, it's got magic, it's got different settings in the world. It's got our world, it's got a fantasy world. Uh, you could you could even translate that over to other worlds if you wanted to through the doorways, and I think it's just I think it offers enough that uh, it, it created a it would create a varied world a varied class system, and I, I think it's a super cool setting that would that would work well to kind of mix up the the typical high fantasy that we get. Is that one that would be? Do you think it would be like overly challenging compared to designing an MMO specifically because it's it doesn't have and you're right they're fantastic books no doubt I love them but it doesn't have like a cohesive uh a cohesive design like you're you're sell, you're selling it as that's really cool you could be like in the wild west you could be fantasy you could be steampunk like all these different and that is very very uh flexible but then doesn't mm. that also mean, well, hey, like with no class limitations and no design, like it starts to feel like a game where just everything's tried to jam in there and there's not like this cohesive design philosophy. 
Yeah, you definitely run that risk, but what, what you do is you tune it in in the beginning and you expand off of that later on and you stay just within the 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 initial, you know, maybe the initial book of the gunslinger. Uh that that book is very short, but it builds a one hell of a world and creates the 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 fantasy of the western versus the magic and and kind of the the dead world that's dying and you build on that going forward. What do you think, Matthew? Are you in on Troy's Dark Tower? I'd never even heard of that. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. God. I don't <laughs> ask for me. Which is, I know, bad. I know who Stephen King is. I just don't know. <laughs> well, there's, there's that, I guess. <laughs> Ninja Pandas in chat says, I want a Starship Troopers uh, MMO, but I wouldn't know how the hell they would make it. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like extermination is the like the the way to make a Starship Troopers game right now. It certainly would be cool to put all like the the political intrigue and space stuff. And <laughs> to Kyle saying they already did, it's called Hell Divers Two. <laughs> yeah. You know, not exactly wrong. <laughs> not exactly wrong there. But I mean, we're seeing other big IPs move into. I wouldn't call it like the MMORPG space, but maybe more the MMO-ish space, right? Like we're seeing Dune uh, mm -hmm. come up soon here. And obviously that has a lot to do with the, the movies were in development and, you know, they were going to be pushing that. So Dune Awakening, kind of the survival MMO-ish thing going on. We are seeing more of those IPs. We also see like Horizon Zero Dawn getting a kind of multiplayer treatment. Uh, the Last of Us, whether that actually happens or not. I mean, the rumors of that one being on again and off again and on again and off again are, are so sporadic. But we are seeing some of those IPs leak into more multiplayer, if not full-blown MMO-ish stuff. I I'm always constantly amazed, at least for me personally, right, that there just is not just a dark, gothic, horror MMORPG. Now, whether you want to take that like full blown Dracula, whether you want to take that into like survival horror genre, you know, maybe a Resident Evil MMO, whether or not it carried that IP or not, I don't care. Uh, either way, the closest we got at one point was the World of Darkness MMO. Remember that? You know, CCP mm -hmm. Games working on the World of Darkness MMO, and then that was kind of canceled. Uh, so we never got to see that one come to light. I guess Secret World has kind of touched on that that area where, you know, things are a bit odd and conspiracy theory and out there and, and you know, esoteric and things like that. But that's like the closest I've I've seen. On, and we've had the, the Resident Evil multiplayer games, which generally just have not been really good at all. But I'm really surprised that they're just, what, like, I think the one that I played the most that maybe kind of fits into this category would have been Forsaken World back in the day. Maybe. I mean, that was like vampires, werewolves, stuff like that. Very gothic uh, world design and, and building design and things like that. But man, that was I, more like anime gothic, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because it was very perfect world uh, international made dark. Like that, that was, yeah. <laughs> if it's like, here we go. Let's flip the color palette and change the classes and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I actually think it's too niche to just do like a horror really? MMO because um, I think most MMOs have like zombies and werewolves, like that horror stuff. Like there's always like graveyard biomes and creepy woods and stuff. Um, to make a whole MMO about like horror related things, it sounds too small in scope. Well, now you've just crushed my dreams. I uh... I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> no. Like, give me a Dracula MMO. Like, I honestly was super interested in V Rising, but it is like 100% survival crafting game and. While it, yeah. you know, while it did its thing for me for a little while, I knew going into it when it was like fully revealed as a full on survival crafting game that it wasn't going to be my thing for very long. But uh, yeah, it, I, I just love that aesthetic. And I feel like there's just as even if you don't go like that gothic horror route, like Matthew saying, you know, some of that can come off as cliche, Troy. That's fine. But 
I, I just like the idea of a darker MMO. Like, remember what? Hellscape London? Is that what it was? Hell, Hellscape? Hellscape? Hell? Hell? I think so. I think it was Hell. Chat, remind me if I'm getting it wrong. And that's maybe making a little bit of a comeback, maybe not in the MMO space, but the, the IP itself. We had some darker ones back in the day. And yeah, Underworld, that would be a, that would be a perfect one in Japan. I don't think it has the IP draw appeal these days that if they would have capitalized maybe, you know, 10 years or so ago that that Underworld. But damn, you know, that or Blade, right? Like something, even if it's going to be modern, Troy, there's no horror MMO out there that that is worth a damn. Even I was going to say, well, not, not not any that's that gets any kind of mainstream attention at all. Are you coming with me, or do you care? You don't you don't like scary shit. I don't like. Um, scary I'm shit. fine with it. I'm pretty cool with it. <laughs> Matthew very quietly in the background. I don't like scary shit. <laughs> Just very quietly in the background. I could, I could definitely get down on some horror stuff for sure. Yeah, and every time Vampire the Masquerade comes and does something, I'm like super happy about it, and then it's just like, oh, oh it's a battle royale, yay! Um, <laughs> like, oh, or Vampire the Masquerade Two is going to an entirely new developer, so see you in eight more years. Like, ugh, we were so close with the World of Darkness one, although we don't even really know how close, right? Like, we saw a couple of videos yeah. of that one back in the Game Breaker days, and and then that was it. It just seems like a the vamp, vampire the masquerade is probably the IP that like has the most potential for MMO stuff. If you want to go dark horror, right? It already has classes. It already has titles. It already has jobs. It already has clans. Like it's all there. <laughs> yeah, like, everything you would want is there, right for the picking. Yeah, pick I up some Edgar Allan Poe stuff, like Lovecraftian. Um, kind of. Yeah, yeah, and and there's secret, a lot to work with there. There's definitely a lot to work with there, like eldritch horror type stuff. Yeah, uh, totally you true. hell, you give Troy any of those board games, the MMO treatment, and Troy's immediately in. Like that's another <laughs> thing too. You can start taking some of those board game uh, IPs, you the Betrayal, uh, House on the Hill, and you know, Eldritch Horror, and all those different types of things. Give them MMO treatments. They already have them built in. The trick is you got to pick the right one, right? You do yep. you do kind of need, Troy, that day one IP recognition appeal in MMOs mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah, you need you need something that's going to grab attention. Even if you're doing an, an original IP, uh, you, you definitely need something that's going to attract the attention of people and at least be in a genre that people are interested in for sure. Hey, total sidebar before we go to upcoming games and stuff like that, Troy. By the way, chat, let us know if there's an IP or a genre that you feel just how is this not an MMO uh, or that you really, really want to. I know people like want to see a Zelda MMO. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. I don't think I can go with that one. I don't think, no. But I, I, I people wouldn't. have clamored for it. And then we oh, kind of... Well, I mean, that Please. one, maybe. Please. Remember Fallout, everybody wanted that MMO. And so they said, well, here's Fallout 76. And they were like, we said we wanted an MMO. Uh, I yeah, don't think that, you were listening. <laughs> that had potential. That had Fallen potential. Earth. Fallen Earth. Right? Yeah, the, Fallen Earth, a number of articles that had written on it where it was like the Fallout-like MMO. <laughs> yep. Stojan says an X-Men MMO. Yeah, X-Men cool. and Marvel, cool. I mean, you've got DCUO, right? you got Champions Online, which is kind of generic superhero, not tied to an IP. But then like X-Men and uh, Marvel, they kind of always get like the multiplayer yeah. side treatment, right? Like four four-person group marvel heroes gameplay from gazillion and stuff back in the day nobody mm. really wants to take the jump into the mmo on that uh let us know let us know <laughs> hey troy real quick before we do the uh, upcoming stuff how is season five going for new world i know you were pretty happy about it i'm seeing like again once again obviously they're doing bug fixes once again uh but i'm like seeing it being really divisive like people are like, what the hell did you do to this game? And then other people are like, this is the best thing ever. Like I'm seeing very little middle ground on this season. Uh, I fall a little bit uh, on the, what the hell did you do to this game a little bit? Um, it's buggy. It's got tons of bugs that they're, they are addressing. They are doing it 
fairly quickly, but still they were slowing down for, for better content, right? They were going to slow down and put out better quality stuff. And here we go again, same old song and dance. Uh, but the, the changes to the, the movement and the combat animations, that's, that's really created some issues for some folks. Uh, the movement, especially you feel like you're ice skating when you're moving around a little bit. Um, it's, the, they changed the coding to the, to their movement and, and combat animations. That way, it would run better in big groups. Yeah, with that way, and things like wars and stuff. things like that. Yeah, that way, the wars and stuff would maybe run a little smoother. But uh, it, it hasn't been all that great. And the you know they've got the they've finished up you know revamping the main storyline quest, so that's good to go for new players, which is great. But as far as existing players, uh, to me, there's not a lot going on there. Yeah, on the old Steam charts, too, it's not exactly probably the spike that they were looking for, right? You know, they've been averaging, you know, 10,000, 9,000, 8,000 players, uh, average players, again. And there's ways you can massage these numbers to, to show some different things. But just from the average player's perspective, uh, on a monthly basis, and yeah, I mean, the patch came, Season 5 came, Controller Support came, Slayer Script came, the new Trial came... 24 hour peak is 11,400, you know, got a bump of a, of a grand or two. They are teasing a big announcement in June. So say everything, everything is wait till June right yeah. now. Wait till June. Just wait till June. We're going to fix everything in June. It, I mean, what could it be? They've already said there wasn't going to be an expansion this year. So I think in June, announcing an expansion that is greater than six months away isn't that big of an announcement to me, at yeah. least. So it's got to be a, a console release, right? Yeah, it's got to be console release, and the the rumored free for all PvP zone I think is going to be included in that as well. Uh, but I think console is going to be their big headliner going coming out of the June announcement. I don't know if that saves it. <laughs> I, I mean, it certainly <laughs> brings more to the flock, but. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I uh, you, you'll you'll bring in players like that, and they've said that they've got something to bring in players. I mean, you're definitely going to bring in at least some players like that. So, but is it is it enough to really make a you know a 180 turnaround from where you're headed right now? I don't know. All right, so let's talk about some uh, upcoming upcoming games. Uh, we already mentioned ghosts, so I'm gonna, I'm going to show some of these things here just to get your impressions. And again, Greg Street would kill me if I did not remind you. Once again, <laughs> that these are super, super, super early, super early, and that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Uh, they kind of tease this one as a potential enemy encounter, but on Twitter, uh, Ghostcrawler did say that this one they they kind of have some plans for, so they're going to be a little they're a little cagey right now on providing more details. Uh, obviously, this is more concept art than than actual showing off. That I this this looks awesome. I love this type of model, this this type of design. Now, how it's impl the best tweet I saw in response to this one, though, by the way, Matthew was, uh, "Please tell me that we can dunk through him." <laughs> uh, I want to. I want to. I want that hitbox to be perfect. If I throw a fireball and it goes right through that hole, I'll be happy. <laughs> I totally missed by putting it right through his chest. Takal says, if you got to tell me that it's early, it's too early. Yeah. Takal likes to know. Takal's one of those dudes, and there's a lot of a lot of people like that in gaming. Like, I would rather hear an announcement that a game is coming two months from now, and that be the first time I heard about it. <laughs> like, Nintendo mm. Direct has been really good about that for the last year or two, right? Where they're like, hey, this game, take a look at a brand new trailer. You didn't even know it was in development. It's on the eShop right now, dog. <laughs> like I love when they do that. <laughs> Japan Freak says, same here. I have no patience. Yeah, it's going to yeah, be yeah. your, like, do you like this type of open source development and seeing stuff this early? It, it's We talked last week about the League of Legends or the Riot MMO, uh, as a few people in chat were like, eh, maybe don't call it League. Most people call it Riot MMO. Okay, fine. Just so you, you know, you're not getting like a Rocket League MMO. Uh, <laughs> getting Riot's MMO. Uh, you, you know, there's the dangers in announcing things very early. Let's take a look at a few other images here. Now, these are more in-game, for lack of a better term, uh, what's limited and available in-game. 
Troy, what are you thinking when you see these things? Oh, it looks like ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's interesting to, to see the, the, the development process and, and kind of what they're looking at and they're playing with as they go and, and seeing, you know, what does the world look like to them for so long? Uh, because all we ever see usually is the, you know, the end result of what it looks like to us. So to kind of see the, the way that things look while they're testing it and being able to have the, the, you know, the wherewithal to, to, to test things like that in an environment that looks as, as, as bland and as boring as that does, you know, kudos to the, to the QA folks who test stuff in, in environments like that. I think, I think if they're like if it's like a Kickstarter kind of project, then this kind of stuff is warranted because you're taking people's money and, and you, you got to show them that there's progress going, but this isn't a, this isn't a crowdfunded game, right? No. Then no. I feel like this isn't necessary, but I also feel like, I don't know, like if people are excited for this game, I don't think there's any harm in showing them where the progress is at. Yeah, that's a really good point, Matthew. Like, the, I guess it does depend on what the development sequence is, right? If you are looking to get funded, you're not going to do that on Kickstarter with just written dialogue of what your plans are and what your game is. You have to do stuff like this, even if it is early conceptually, where, yeah. you know, somebody like uh, Fantastic Pixel Castle doesn't necessarily have to be dropping these right now. But mm -hmm. they have made, like, uh, particularly Greg, uh, Gro Ghost Crawler, has made, Troy, this, like, kind of big uh, big mantra behind the company of, we want you as part of development. And we have heard that a million times before, but this certainly sticks with that mantra of, here's what we got. What feedback do you have now? If you tell me it looks like ass, I'm skipping your comment. You can tell me you don't like certain things, but just generically, oh, this looks like ass. Somebody said it looks like the Dream World robot. That's funny because the Dream World robot from all that time ago was just the fucking, what Unreal uh, or Unity uh, asset robot. I forget w which storefront they got it from uh, at the time. <laughs> so it's not even the Dream World robot. <laughs> but I'm all for it. I understand why some people might not be. Uh, yeah. We're not going to see this for years. And that does, Baron brings up a good point. If it's 10 years from now, will I even remember it? I don't know. Yeah, 10 years from now, I won't, I won't remember looking at this image. <laughs> uh, next I, on. I might remember we looked at some images, but I ain't going right. to remember what I saw. Nexon, Matthew, released a new dev update for the first Descendant, something you and I are eagerly awaiting, some chances to get back in. They said, hey, you know, all those tests ago, we had the surveys, and we scored a three out of five on the user interface, and we weren't happy with that, so we made a bunch of changes. And then in a, uh, the most recent test, we still only scored a four out of five, which is better, but it's still not where players want it. So here, we've done another bunch over the last few months of huge UI improvements, and you're gonna get a chance to test these and mess around with these later, but we wanted to show them off to you, including, and kind of this one I kind of go, how, how was this not in there? Like, seriously, how was this not in a looter shooter like the first Descendant? Uh, loadouts. Mm -hmm. Loadouts. How they weren't in there already, I don't know, but I'm showing you a screenshot of their entire new loadout feature. Uh, and this is going to be divided into a couple of categories here. You'll have the Descendants module loadout, the weapon module loadout, and the integrated presets. And you can kind of see in the screenshot where you can set them up for like, hey, this is when I'm soloing. This is when I'm doing co-op stuff and jump back and forth. How it wasn't there to begin with, I don't know, but... Yet another example of, I don't know how good this game is going to be, Matthew. I want it to be good, but I am just continually impressed with the way they keep taking feedback and then a few months later coming and saying, here's what we did with your feedback. What do you think now, boss? Yeah, um, that's great. I, I too, am so psyched for this game. Uh, it was so much fun when I played it. These loadouts were great because, yeah, things were really messy when I played. Yeah, they really the, were. The test. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, nothing. 
I had nothing more to say than than this is great, and I'm glad they keep taking feedback. We don't. Do we have a release date yet for this? No, this one's still sitting in no. what summer? I think it is. Right, they said this summer. I think that's the the most recent update. Yeah, summer 2024 is still the most recent update. Hey, uh, Troy, I know at one point you were kind of interested in X Defiant. Are you still? That's the shooter nah, coming from Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I've kind of run my course on that one. <laughs> I don't know that I'm still really looking forward to that one very much. So don't get me wrong here, right? Like when a game is delayed uh, for quality reasons or whatever, game delays can be a very, very good thing, right? They absolutely can. But when a game gets repeatedly delayed, that kind of throws a red flag, I think, for most people. And when a Ubisoft game in particular gets repeatedly <laughs> delayed, <laughs> I think that kind of throws a red flag. Now, some of the delays for this, because x Define has been delayed multiple times. It's delayed again. Spoiler, if you didn't see where I'm going with this. Um, some of them, you were like, okay, you know what? They got feedback. They said, we weren't happy with some of this feedback. We're going to delay things and make some changes. Cool, right, Skull and Bones? You're looking at you? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then it got delayed because it couldn't pass console certification back then, Troy. Wasn't, wasn't that one of the things? They were like, we can't pass. It was, I forget. It was, I think it was PlayStation certification. They weren't passing. Um, yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And, well, now it's being delayed again. It was... They never like officially said, hey, March 31st, but they did say in like financial reports uh, and things like that, that it was going to be March. That's when they were looking towards the end of March. Uh, that came directly from Ubisoft's financial reports. Remember, this game was supposed to be out last year. Um, oh, they failed Xbox and PlayStation certification. Oh, was it both? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, that was back in October of last year when that happened. You know, I get this game confused with Marathon. Does anybody else get it confused? Oh, Marathon? that's your Bungie's uh, thing that's also been delayed, yeah. Aren't they like the same kind of game? Uh, we, we actually don't know a lot about... Marathon's going to be a shooter game, yeah. We just don't know a lot about it. Mm. Uh, so this is being a, a delayed again, X Defiant, indefinitely. Why? Quote, there's still some improvements that we need to test, making the end of March impossible. Okay. They probably, you had to have known that for a while now. This announcement, mm -hmm. by the way, came out as, <laughs> as close to the end of March as it possibly could. I guess technically they had another day or so they could have announced it, but it was announced March 29th. <laughs> Uh, they are they on April Fool's Day. <laughs> they are preparing a 12-hour stress test uh, on PC and consoles, but guess what? We don't have a date for that either. <sighs> oh, I don't know. Like somebody had commented, and I totally agreed with them. Like delay if you need to. You know that's much better than crunch, and you know the, I I I'm 100 on board. But you got to admit it is a red flag when something gets delayed this many times it looks so bad it just looks so bad especially for a big company like Ubis like ubisoft well i mean i'd like to say it's a change of pace for them and it usually doesn't happen but this is kind of a norm for them <laughs> it's delaying something indefinitely yeah it's kind of become their signature at this point like just <laughs> delay it delay it delay it <laughs> And then drop it, and it's terrible. Another Ubisoft product. You'll get it when you fucking get it. Uh, <laughs> Friday the 13th guys, is always, coming always. back. Woohoo! I know this was not everybody's cup of tea. I loved this asymmetric horror game, and it was kind of like the first one. Dead by Daylight was a thing, but I was more into Friday the 13th, and unfortunately, the original got just kind of sidelined due to issues that weren't their own with the whole uh, IP and copyright litigation that had been going on at the time. Uh, and you can't, you can still play this technically, the original. You can't buy it on Steam or anything anymore, but you can still play it. It's peer to peer, so it's not great. Uh, but a group of fans is bringing it back. Is bringing it back as Friday the 13th resurrected. And it's going to awesome. be free as a mod. And no, you don't need the the original game. 
and they are answering a ton of questions on their Twitter account, including console, what they say, which they say things like, you know, please wait, please wait. So there are some questions that they're indicating we won't. The answer is probably yes, but we can't answer right now is kind of the way they're teasing different things. They seem to be very, very um, active on their Twitter. Now, my question is, how long will I be able to play this? Because I feel like this is going to upset somebody from a legal front <laughs> at some point. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. That's the one of the things I didn't really see them address was from, from a legal front. Um uh, have, have, have they taken any kind of steps to be able to get the okay to do this? And is it going to just be taken down at some point, especially if it becomes popular again, I could see it being taken down again at some point. Now we don't have any release date for it or anything. They're supposed to make an announcement on April 15th. Uh, I believe is the date. I can't wait. I wish them all the luck in the world. I loved this game. It was very unfortunate what happened. Uh, and I hope that this does have like the blessings it needs to have to be a free mod for a game that you can't buy anymore. Um, where I feel like it might be a little challenging uh, is the fact that it is a mod for a game you can't buy anymore that happens to use copyrighted people and characters in it. That's where things might get a little a little dicey in the in the in the future. But I hope not. I am rooting, rooting for this. And Uber Jason as a reward? Hell yeah. And they've like, <laughs> they've amplified the experience gains. Like, uh, it's just, I had a like a shit eating eight year old grin on my face when I saw this story coming through. Uh, one more thing upcoming for you Age of Water, uh, Gaijin Entertainment's kind of, they were calling this an MMO, but I've noticed in reading some of their like press releases and their stuff on websites and stuff, looks like they're trying to shy away from the MMO term. Uh, like even on their Steam page, they just call it a new online adventure game set on a post-apocalyptic Earth. Although very initially, their stuff did say uh, MMO in it, and it is tagged on Steam as MMO as well. Uh, so if you've ever wanted to be Kevin Costner in Waterworld, Troy, here's your chance. Yeah, Mad Max meets Waterworld. Let's go blow up ships. <laughs> like Sea of Thieves in the modern age. Just just go around blowing up other people. That's what most people are going to be doing. And it's coming to consoles, too, on the same day as its PC launch. So they're not, they're not screwing around. They're not gonna. They're not screwing around on it. A early access on Steam is April eighteenth. Coming to consoles then as well. We'll certainly be checking it out. Matthew, have you had a chance to look at this? Does this have any type of draw for you? It's it, it's like Skull of Bones, but maybe better and not <laughs> seventy bucks, right? <laughs> well, we don't know pricing yet. It just says on their Steam early access page that you know the pricing it may increase. It, no, I I wouldn't imagine oh, it can be. Like, that would be kind of absurd. Uh, all right. Last few things before we head over and do the uh, weekly bombs. Let me write down my timestamp here. Let's get a little eye-rolling news in here. Hey, Troy. Yo. I got news for you, boss. Let me get here. I'm going to get a close-up of Troy because I want his... Let me, let me prepare my yeah, shock face. Prepare your, prepare your face here. Remember when in uh, the UK they said, hey, we don't want to regulate loot boxes that might uh, cause unintended consequences. So we want to create a group that will regulate or give good uh, recommendations on how to manage loot boxes in games. And that group consisted of a number of executives and higher ups at video game companies like EA and Jagex. Yeah. Well, the principles that they put forth, including transparency of products containing loot boxes in advertisements, advertisements they have not been playing by the rules they freaking made. <laughs> what? You're crazy. Why are you making up lies about these video game companies? They would never. They would never. If you couldn't see this one coming, remember, like, they were like, the UK map back then was like regulate yourselves or we're going to regulate you and they were like oh we'll regulate ourselves yeah well, was, why would they how could you expect people to like <laughs> to like 
shoot themselves in the foot in regards to making money. It doesn't, obviously you, you need the government to actually step in. Le- Self-regulation would have never worked. Leon Zhao, and this is coming from The Guardian, uh, this dude's a rock star when it comes to loot box stuff, by the way. We've quoted him and, and sourced him a number of times on various loot box things throughout the years. He's the one that he he's he reported like four to the ASA, the Advertising Standards Authority, saying these don't these have loot boxes and their advertising does not include that disclaimer as per the principles that they created. Um, and the ASA upheld all four of his complaints. Uh, two of them were in uh, EA games. I'm sorry, two of them were in um, what's it called? Hatch. Hatch was the name of the company, wasn't it? Du, 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 du. Yes. Uh, and they said, hey, you know, that was just a mistake. Hutch. Hutch, we didn't understand the rules, so we'll fix these things. One was Jagex's RuneScape. Jagex said there was no room in the Facebook ad for the disclaimer, but we included oh, the disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> but we just dis- we included the disclaimer in other ads. And uh, EA said, uh, oh, these two are due to human error, and they fixed both. Um, Leon uh, doesn't quite agree, says, yeah, sure. I actually have 268 other complaints I could file, but I'm the only one doing this, and I didn't have the time or resources to actually do it myself. I'm stunned, oh, Troy. Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. It just what a shocking revelation, and I can't believe that you know people would accuse these video game companies of doing something, uh, you know, uncouth it's absolutely a little bit nuts. absolutely nuts hey if you were affected by lord of the rings and ddo basically being down all this past weekend and having massive server issues things are back <clears> up <throat> and there are some reward codes going out for you uh uh you in lotro the spring festival has been extended for another week uh will now run through the ninth a 20 percent virtue xp boost has been given to all players from april 3rd through the 8th and you can use this coupon code REWARD, all in caps, 2024, no spaces, just R-E-W-A-R-D 2024 in the Lord of the Rings online store. And you'll get to grab a mount of your choosing for the inconvenience. On the DDO side of things, the VIP daily gold rolls have been extended to the 26th. And everyone will receive a 25% heroic and X, an epic XP boost. 25% guild renown boost and a 10% or a 10, plus 10 treasure hunting boost. <sighs> and additional VIP days and stuff like that if you're a VIP person. So you get compensated. Once, once they get it fixed where they can give them to you, they've been having some issues <laughs> yeah. issuing those uh, Just a <laughs> two VIP bit. days. Just a little bit. Uh, and speaking of down, remember we reported, Matt, that uh, Respawn had their Apex Legend t- tournament postponed as people forced cheats onto pros' games without them knowing uh, live. Well, yeah, they're also having massive account data loss issues. They temporarily wow. took the servers offline. They're deploying a fast fix. They said, hey, we messed up. Uh, and they're trying to get everybody's accounts back up to where they were before they lost that progression. Yeah. So fun stuff. Did you guys also freak out when they that that anti cheat software was apparently compromised and looking through all your games to figure out if they use it or not? Mm-hmm. If your computer was What a world we whatever. live in. <laughs> <laughs> what a world. Let's go do the weekly bombs. Matthew, you're up. Okay. I got to give a big old A bomb to Amazon Game Studios in New World because there's like no reason to play New Worlds right now. And there hasn't Ooh. been for such a long time. This new season, like, yeah, there's new stuff, but, like, not really. New World, like, you go on for, like, an hour, check out the new stuff, and you're like, yeah, there's still nothing to do. And I personally, this might be a conspiracy theory, but I think they're going to drop New World on consoles, get a little bit more cash, and then just just 
shut down the game entirely as they go and work on that new Lord of the Rings MMO. Mm. I can see it being maintenance moded. I don't think it'll be shut down anytime maintenance soon. Maintenance moded, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think they're going to shut it down at least until after Lord of the Rings is out. Troy, what you got? I'm going to give a very early dub bomb to Hexadome Aristia Showdown. Uh, turn-based 1v1 battler. Um, it's in uh, a testing phase for a few days here, and so far I like what I see. I got to play it a little bit last night. I'm working on the first look, so I didn't have a ton of time to put into something else at the moment. But since it's such a short window that they're actually going to let you play, I was like, I've got to get in at some point <laughs> and get my hands on it. And I like what I see so far. Like I said, I'm still very early on. I've played one match. Uh, so I've really got to get to know the the champions and and the and the map and and really you know work the scoring tiles that you can occupy and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not the same as Atlas Reactor, but it definitely gives off some of those aesthetically some of those same vibes that Atlas Reactor was giving off that I enjoyed so much. Yeah. So I'm hoping that I can fall in love with these characters as much as I did the Atlas Reactor characters. I'm going to give a dub bomb to Friday the 13th coming back unofficially, of course. And the first look that Troy's working on is predecessor. Expect that like Monday or so of next week. Uh, from the viewers on YouTube or MMO bomb, Hyper Dude says, Dub bomb, computer gaming in the 2020s. This is the golden age of computer games. There is no other world where a dragon dogfight online game would get funded. Shout out to Century Age of Ashes. A bomb, the stuff League of Legends players are going to say to each other when they wipe in a raid in Riot's new MMO. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, from chat to Kals' de bomb to X-Men 97, that shows the truth. Yes. Extra props to episode one showing how Storm is supposed to be depicted in media. And Ninja Pan is saying de bomb to the 14 slash 16 event. While it's short, it's really worth doing. Yeah, go get your tor uh, Torgol good boy. Uh, question of the week last week was, will the League of Legends or Riot MMO ever actually see the light of day or will be canceled or turned into a new project? Someone else says, I'm not expecting anything from the Riot MMO, uh, with at best anything they did being reworked into something else. The statement they gave about what they had supposedly not being different enough just seemed like a way of giving themselves an out for that entire project. For Guild Wars 3, a lot of times when I see people talking about sequels to service-based games, they sound like people used to playing product-based games, where if the company wants to continue things, they make a new game. Although with a service-based game, they just make new updates for the existing title. The only reason uh, to a sequel to a service-based game should be made is if they want to do something different enough from their existing titles in that IP, as has been seen in various past sequels for games, Lineage 1 and 2, Guild Wars 1 and 2, that type of thing. I don't think, yeah, I think there's other reasons, but I also don't think you're, you're that far off the mark there. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, Ming Tao says, for the second question of the week, I have a few things to say, so bear with me. One, that was effed up what the NCSoft CEO did to Arena Net. He threw Arena Net under the bus just to cover his own butt. F that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> I hope there's a Guild Wars 3 in the works, but to be honest, the fact that it was announced like that means that it is probably three to five years away at the earliest. Also true. Three, I think it's possible for Guild Wars 1, 2, and 3 to coexist. Guild Wars 1 is a co-op game and Guild Wars 2 is an MMO. Both games are different enough not to cannibalize each other. If ArenaNet makes Guild Wars 3 a different genre as well, it should be fine. Personally, would like to see an ARPG in the Guild Wars universe, something along the lines of Last Epoch, Path of Exile, or Torchlight 2. Not 3, just 2. 3 was bad. <laughs> <laughs> we speculated quite the same thing. You know, do something a little different and let all three go. Go ahead, Matt. HyperDude144 said, I think Riot has the potential to make a new online game. Whether it is an, an MMO, that remains to be seen. It's pretty far outside their genre, and those things are expensive. Uh, Troy, I'm going to take to Cal's here just because it's longer. Uh, yeah, get it over with here. <laughs> so Cal's question of the week says, yes, the League of Legends MMO will see the light of day as an MMO. You don't announce a project that big and from a studio perspective, likely to be highly anticipated by your fan base and then never release it. It will come out as an MMO, but not until like 2030 or something. 
Question of the week two. Not only should they be working on Guild Wars 3, it should have been out already. I get that MMOs are designed to stay around longer than single-player games, but 12 years is way too old for a game to still be on the market tech-wise. The year that your current MMO hits 10 years old, your new MMO should debut that same year or the year after. If it makes financial sense to keep both running, cool. If not, then move on to the new thing. Final Fantasy XIV was the most popular MMO on the market the last couple of years, so that pushed the limit a bit, but we should already be talking about FF17 online coming in the next year or so. Finish it up there, Troy. Uh, Thrax says, Guild Wars 2 is one of the most populated MMOs right now. I don't see a reason making a Guild Wars sequel. A little bit divisive, a little bit divisive. I want to know from all of you in the question of the week this week, what traditionally non-MMO, non-multiplayer game would make a great MMO and how would it stand out? How would it be a little bit special? You don't even have to like the IP that you're recommending, but if you think it works, great. And if you like it, even better. Tell us why. That's going to do it for us here today. Until next week, Matthew, where can everybody find you? YouTube. Check me out on YouTube. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. (laughs) Troy. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Noob Fridge. I'm going to be taking a couple days off from streaming on Twitch just because I'm not feeling great. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man One, but more importantly, follow at MMO Bomb. You'll know every time we're going live with a podcast, a stream. Uh, I just burped. Excuse me. <laughs> First look videos and more. Stay safe. We'll see you on the servers. Now, will the recording die when I hit stop?